What's up YouTube, this is Print Practical. Recently I put out a video of me doing injection molding with a hot glue gun and a 3D printed mold. This video did really well for my channel and I did promise that I was gonna make a video on how to actually draw a mold in Fusion, so that's what this video is. I wanna preface this video by saying I'm not a materials engineer. I'm not a mechanical engineer. I don't know anything about injection molding. A lot of the terminology I'm gonna use is unofficial, but I have done this successfully and I'm just going to show you what I know and then you can leave any feedback you want in the comments, whether you like it or hate it. So enough of the chit chat, let's hop over to Fusion. I'll go through a mold that I already designed to show you the different parts and then we'll go through and design our own mold step by step. Okay, like I said, not an injection molding expert, but let's go through this mold I created in my last video, which was for the iPhone cable. If we take a look here, this is the injection point into the mold. And then we have these two rectangles to the side, which are used to pry open the mold after you've done your injection and you want to release the part. This is one end of the wire coming through the mold here. If we look at the back end, we also have these prying areas, but we also have these small slits. And these are used as an air relief because you're injecting plastic through this hole here on this side and you need some way for the air that's currently inside the mold to escape and that's what these little slits are for. So let's pop open the mold here. We're going to take the top area and make that disappear. And as you can see, this is the mold that I was creating for the cable. Or this is a negative of that. And then there's also these alignment pins that are used to make sure that the mold is aligned with the top half. And that's pretty much it. That's all the parts of the mold. I should have said this in the beginning, but I'm gonna assume that you have some type of 3D drawing knowledge because this video would be way too long if you don't know how to draw anything. Here I have a USB-C cable. It's some Chinese Apple Watch charger, but really I'm just gonna use this for this cable end here, and we're gonna make a mold that is very similar to the iPhone one, but for this cable. I took all the measurements off camera and I'll post those on the screen. I'm gonna start by creating a component and we're gonna call it cable. And we are gonna start sketching out the cable. If I look at the cable here, uh, I'm gonna start with this piece and then model this piece and then this piece. So that's it, drew the cable. Next, we wanna draw the overmold on the cable, what we want it to look like after we release it from the mold. So I'm gonna create a new component. I'm gonna name it overmold. And then we are going to create an offset plane off of this face. And now I'm not taking it as an exact science here, but I'm just going to create the overmold that I want. Let's go eight, let's go eight millimeters. And we're going to extrude this out. That looks pretty good. And now we can make it look a little nicer. We can chamfer the edges. One point five looks good. And now let's go back to the main project. And that's what we want to end up with after we do our injection. All right, designing the mold. So let's create a new component once again. And it's going to be called mold. Now I'm gonna start a sketch on the horizontal plane and I'm gonna draw out the body of my mold. Now you wanna make sure that you have some type of distance from the edge of the mold and the edge of your over mold. And I'm also gonna make sure that my rectangle is centered across this cable 
Now you could make this exact. I'm not worried about it. I think this looks pretty good. So I'm going to finish that sketch. And then we're going to extrude this symmetrically. And we can look at it from the side here to see when we got the proper distance. If you make it too wide, it doesn't matter. All it's doing is wasting a little bit of material. I don't really care. So that looks good. Let me check to make sure I have enough distance here. Yeah, I probably want to increase this distance a little bit too. Okay, now if you remember from when I went over the mold that I already designed, there's a few different aspects that we need to add into this mold design. One is we need the injection point hole. So I'm going to make a sketch on this side. I'm going to make a circle and I'm gonna make that four and a half millimeters big. It really depends on what you're using to inject into this mold. Uh, I'm gonna use a hot glue gun. Uh, I know everybody's got their opinions about that. I don't really care. I'm just trying to show you how to draw a mold. So there's our injection point. Now I wanna cut that out and I'm gonna cut that to the middle of the mold. Um, so I'm gonna make a mid plane to the middle of the mold here and then I'm going to extrude this hole to the middle. So we have our injection point now. Now we want those tabs that we can use to pry the mold open. So I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna create a sketch, put a midline down the part so that way I only have to draw this once. Okay, I was gonna say, I was like, I didn't even see the hole here anymore. Um, so I'm going to draw a rectangle. Uh, I'm gonna make it two and a half, and this is all arbitrary. It really depends on what you're gonna use to pry it open. Uh, but I'll make it two and a half by one and a quarter. And then I want to center it on the part, obviously, or on the mold. And then I want to just make sure that it is somewhere in between this circle and here. You know, like I said, this isn't an exact science. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to mirror this over that center line to give me my tab on the other side. Let's finish that sketch. Let's move it in an arbitrary distance. Let's go one and a half millimeters. Now we have our pry tabs there. Uh, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to mirror this feature to the other side of the mold. So I'm gonna mirror that feature and then the mirror plane, I'm gonna select this construction plane that I made on the midpoint. Boom. So now we have those pry tabs as well. And lastly, we needed the air relief. So I think for this one, I'm just gonna throw an air relief in the center here. So I'm gonna to go to the back of the mold you want to try and put the air relief on the opposite side of where the injection point is. I'm going to make a rectangle and we're going to make this uh, point. We're going to make this point two uh, wide, just enough to let a little bit of air out, sometimes a little bit of hot glue or whatever you're injecting gets in there, but that's fine. And then we're going to make it two and a half wide. And all we want to do is center this on the back of the mold here. Alrighty. And once again, we're going to extrude this to the middle point. We're going to go back to that plane. Okay, we're looking good here. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to actually create the negative of this part in the mold. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this combine tool. We're going to select our target body and we're going to select our mold. And then the tool bodies, 
we're going to select the overmold and the cable. And then we're going to use a cut. And I'm going to keep the tools just so that I can show everything together, but you don't have to. And then you can hit OK. And now if I make the overmold and the cable disappear, we'll see in a second that we have a nice mold within this cube. All right, next I want to split this mold in half. We're gonna make a mid plane again, but from the top to the bottom. And then we are going to split this body using this tool, done. Now, let's make the top body disappear. And as you can see, we have this nice mold of our cable and the over mold. So this is pretty close to finished. The last thing we need to do is add some alignment pins. So with only the bottom visible, let's create a sketch over here. And I'm just gonna draw out in a random spot, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm gonna draw out some alignment pins. I'm making them two and a half millimeters. And I'm just gonna kinda throw them somewhere. And uh, I'll move this over like that. That looks good. And then we will extrude. And now, like, this looks a little weird, I know. Just, just bear with me here. We're gonna extrude them out two and a half. Now I am going to mirror these two features across the plane. Up. Oh. I need a different plane. We'll go between here and here. And then, yeah. And then we're gonna mirror. And I mean, I could have just drew three alignment pins. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want here. Um, I'm just gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna take away this construction plane. And now I am going to cut the holes in the top here. Now we can do this the same exact way that we use the combine tool to make the actual negative. So what we'll do is we can do a combined. We can combine, we wanna combine this body, the top, with the bottom body. We wanna keep the tool and we wanna cut. Now if we do that, let's look at the top and you'll see we got our holes here. So that's perfect. Um, just for sanity, I'm going to do a little bit of tolerances here. Um, looking for press pull, yeah. So um, I'm going to move the top up just like 0.25 millimeters. Um, and I'm also going to increase the diameter of these cylinders a tiny bit, just so that we make sure that our 3D printed parts, you know, fit nicely. And finally, to finish up, we're going to go back to the bottom of the mold, and I'm going to just chamfer the edges. And that's it. We have created our mold. Never tried canola oil on this before, but we're gonna do it today. Just for the haters. I'm gonna wipe down each side though. They should be pretty lubed up. And let's push some hot glue into it.
You can see some came out of the air relief there. It's been a few minutes. Let's pop this bad boy off, see what we got. Looks pretty darn good. There was a little bit of flashing, and that's probably because the tolerance around the wire is a little bad. But if I trim this excess off, I think we'll have success here. Overall, this turned out awesome. I probably would have clamped it a little harder to prevent some of that flashing up here, but you know, the mold still came out great, and the mold is totally reusable. So there we go, we drew up our own mold, printed it out, tested it with some hot glue, worked just as expected. I used canola oil instead of vegetable oil this time. Pretty much any oil or alcohol or whatever could be used as a release agent. It really just depends on what you're injecting into the mold. So that's gonna be it for this one. If you like this, subscribe, put a comment down below with any feedback. You know, I tried to preface this video by saying I'm not an expert in any of this. This is just a little experiment that I did earlier and I was just showing you how I designed the mold for that. Let me know what you wanna see in the future and thanks for watching.